Welcome to the Operate Intelligently podcast, the podcast for all things operations. Thank you for joining us on the Operate Intelligently podcast today. We got another great topic. We're going to talk about the future of work. And joining me is Frank Cottle, founding chairman and CEO of Alliance Business Centers Network. Frank, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Brian, very much. So, Frank, tell us a little bit about you and your background and what you do with the Alliance Business Centers Network. Well, I started my my career in the late 60s, uh, actually as a commercial diver. I worked my way through college till I got married and doing uh, what was termed at the time, and I was a contractor to one of our federal agencies, uh, as interesting work. Uh, I moved on from that. The next 10 years, I raced yachts. I raised on the ocean and thought that uh, anything I could do to be around the ocean would give me a lot of pleasure. And, and so I, I spent a lot of time uh, voyaging and racing yachts uh, all over. And uh, that brought me into contact with a lot of very interesting people. Uh, and I decided from that career, I wanted to move into commercial real estate. So in 1979, 80, I Uh, started the predecessor company, and we started building, uh, doing land banking and building uh, 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 buildings uh, across the southwestern U.S., California, Arizona, and Texas. Uh, And we ran into these funny little thing called executive suites, and we decided that we would build dedicated buildings just for that business model. And executive suites became business centers, and business centers became co-working centers, and logistics centers and incubators and accelerators throw us the industry has migrated. We've been involved really since day one. Uh, Today we're a technology based company, uh, a SaaS company and an investment company uh, investing in projects and technology all over the world that deals with the flexibility in the workspace. Thanks. So uh, could you talk a little bit about like in the past 10 years, we've, we've seen a lot of changes in, in a lot of industries, but you know, what have you seen um, change in the past 10 years in the space of work and facility management operations? Uh, well, I, I think the the term flexibility is, is what comes up the most common uh, commonly facility managers manage on behalf of uh, primarily large corporates and government uh, uh, some property companies as well, but, but, and those two structures and organizations are radically, radically changing the way they hire, um, uh, the employment structure, uh, what they want to see out of their employees as a result of which workplace flexibility is, is the key word. Uh, for uh, what is driving changes in facilities management, um, not just in layout and space, but in the way space is used primarily with uh, requirements for booking and reservation systems for hot desking, conference and meeting room structures, uh, the ability to handle an employee not as an occupier anymore. There's no such thing as occupiers. There are only travelers. And that radically changes the way you look at property in general. Uh, And a lot of FM companies really aren't quite keeping up with that concept. Uh, They don't know how to manage the movement of employees so much as uh, what they're used to doing, which is managing the static element of physical space. So um, what do you see in the future of workspaces? Like how's that going to impact maintenance and operation professionals that are, that are having to still maintain these facilities? Well, I think the facilities themselves will change. Uh, certainly you'll have higher density than we have in the past, not necessarily from open officing, but from multiple users say, utilizing the same workstations. And so all the technology behind uh, the way people access space and access services uh, are going to uh, continue to change, which they have been changing over the last 10 years. They're going to continue and accelerate. We see also that a common uh, element, uh, some of our consulting clients, large uh, uh, fixed asset uh, investment companies, some of the largest in the world, um, they come to us and say, hey, you know, our, our, our major corporate uh, just had 100,000 feet of space with us and they just renewed for 50,000 feet. What's up? What's happening? And uh, they, they look at that same client and they say, well, that client, you know, they, they have more, a larger workforce. They have a, 
uh, more revenues, they've grown, and yet they're taking half the space. And we don't understand that. Um, and what they're doing is they're contracting. Uh, they no longer have an employment base of three or 400,000 people worldwide. They now have a, a, a workforce, and that workforce is 25, 30% contractors. And so one of the major changes that's coming along inside of the corporate at the strategic planning level is they're trying to match the leasehold liability of their space uh, with the contracts uh, that they have with their workforce. So that means a big shortening of the lease cycle, if you will. And they want to do that for two reasons, uh, flexibility, uh, but also it really helps their balance sheet and that drive to shareholder value. So there's a big push by the financial end of uh, all organizations, including government, um, to make this shift and, and shorten the lease cycle. And that's going to materially impact facilities managers. The other thing that uh, is uh, changing that uh, is that in today's competitive world of uh, employment, uh, seeking the best people, which is the biggest challenge most large corporations and most organizations have today. It's, it's, it's not customers, it's seeking the best people to join their teams. Uh, that requires a flexible workplace package. Uh, so as I said, there are no occupiers anymore. There are only travelers. So today uh, I'm working for my residence as an example, uh, not for my office. Uh, yesterday I was working from one office and Monday I was working from a different office. And so it, it, we all are much more mobile and that uh, has a huge impact on uh, the way you set up facilities management and the way you look at uh, everything that has to do with connectivity. So I wonder if you could expand on that. Like, so uh, with people being more travelers and less occupiers, how does that kind of impact say the facility management professional? Is it that they don't like their routine changes, the, the demand for, um, maintenance task changes? Well, yes, and I think what, what, what they're maintaining is changing too. Uh, facilities management companies um, are getting more and more into managing the technology end of the facility, not just the physical plant. Uh, and that uh, changes materially as you go to a highly flexible workspace. Um, so that's going on. And I'll use our own business as an example. Uh, we think that by 2023 or so, the while we sell virtual offices and we sell uh, co-working and business center space today, we think that we'll be selling more and more connected software in the future. Um, we don't think that we'll be selling a necessarily a, a virtual office so much as a virtual reality office. Uh, if I look at the next generation of workforce, Gen Z, uh, that's the first fully native digital generation we've had. And what's the biggest thing that they demand and that they do spend their time on technology with? I'll ask you that question, Brian. Uh, I'm going to say their mobile phone. Uh, gaming. Gaming. Okay. Gaming. Okay. Same thing. They're gaming G on their gaming, mobile phone. Gaming via mobile phone. Yeah. 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 They're gaming on their, on their mobile device a, a lot of time. Gaming. So when they come to the workplace, they're going to be fu they're fully embedded in gaming. And something else is happening in technology right now that will impact facilities management and all facilities is that the gaming companies, which do the best rendering uh, uh, in, in the world, um, the best art artificial uh, rendering of, of people and personalities, facial recognition, things of that nature, they're the best at that. They're losing market share as Gen Z grows up. Uh, not people that will stop gaming, but people will be gaming one hour a day instead of three hours a day. Mm -hmm. They don't like that. They've got the horsepower. They've got the technology to change. And so they're looking at the workplace right now. They're saying, what can we do in the workplace that creates a new workplace environment based on gaming technology? So you're going to see virtual reality offices and software being sold by property companies or being installed by large uh, corporates and government uh, companies like ourselves to where people will slip on their headset, slip on their, uh, their devices. And when they do, they will enter their office. So do I need an office in a 50 story building on a nice corner office, do I even aspire to that overlooking Central Park in Manhattan anymore? 
if for a half or a quarter, a third, a tenth the cost, I can slip on a headset and have that same office in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a big migration of the way space is used in the future, and that will happen between 22 and 32. By 32, 33, that will be a ubiquitous form of doing business. Mm -hmm. uh, haptics, uh, everything that has to do with motion, your hands, your feet, et cetera, are now being embedded uh, uh, in trials, even in government trials uh, in Northern Europe. Uh, in Sweden, as an example, you insert a little chip in your finger uh, and now you can buy things, you can get on buses and trains and it basically identifies you and, and ties directly to your payment system. Um, you can put haptics on uh, like fingernail polish uh, uh, today. Uh, so all of the technology that's necessary from uh, holographic uh, uh, transportation, look at Microsoft's HoloLens as an illustration of that. That's gonna radically change the way people use real estate which is going to even more radically change the way we have to manage the plant, manage the facility. You may have noticed that we're about to hit the 100th episode of the Operate Intelligently podcast. It's also our 20th birthday year here at Dude Solutions. So we're working on a really special 20th anniversary podcast series that we're going to start releasing episode 100 through 102. So please look forward to this series. It's going to have a bunch of great interviews with longtime dudes and dude clients. You may hear someone you know or yourself, and it's just going to be a really interesting, informative, but fun piece on the journey of the dude and where we've come from and where we're all going together. So definitely check that out. Yeah, it's some interesting uh, ways that people are using technology. I want to know if you if you have any tips and suggestions on how facility managers and operation professionals can kind of stay ahead with all these changes coming. And I, I think, look, you know, the physical plant is always going to have to be maintained. Uh, you can't have the walls fall down and the roof fall in. Uh, so there's no no material changes there that are going on going to go on. But I think looking at the density and how their people are going to manage density and how people are going to manage radically increased bandwidth issues, uh, especially in older buildings that carry a lot of iron uh, in them. I'll use the Empire State Building as an example. It's a wonderful building to look at, but a terrible building to try and install Wi-Fi in. Uh, so older buildings uh, are going to have to be rethought uh, in the way you things are managed uh, mm -hmm. uh, because without the bandwidth business will, will not function mm -hmm. uh, and that bandwidth will both predominantly with G5 coming on be more and more wireless and Wi-Fi mm -hmm. so having a, a, a solution for that is going to be critically important as we see things go on. Also looking at transit systems within larger buildings, how to move higher density of people around through existing uh, transit systems, elevators, stairwells, uh, escalators, et cetera, is going to become a key. And in some buildings for safety purposes, uh, those buildings really are gonna have to be repurposed because they won't have the density uh, because you won't have the ingress and egress capabilities, so you can't put the density in them as a result of which they'll no longer be economically viable. Mm -hmm. uh, so they'll have to be repurposed. Uh, some of that repurposing is good because uh, as we increase density in commercial use, that frees up space for multi-use, and that means that density in cities can improve housing situations and transportation situations. So it's not just the future of work, it's just the future period mm -hmm. that we're looking mm -hmm. at and work is, is a big part of it. Yeah. It's kind of the, our changing behavior and culture. How's that going to affect home? How's that going to affect work? How's it going to affect play? It's really kind of across the spectrum. Well, you're, you're going to, you're going to work and play and, and do everything everywhere simultaneously, <laughs> as, as, as I said. And, and if you look at it today, um, if I'm in my car, well, my car is actually reading my text messages and, and is doing different things that I can see and respond to, but I can do that verbally. So the mixing of media for communications is uh, a big element and the uh, capability of having that type of uh, capacity everywhere 
anywhere all the time is changing. And that will uh, obviously have a big impact on facilities and, and all aspects of our lives, not just facilities. Mm -hmm. Well, Frank, I want to thank you for coming on today and giving us a little bit of insight into virtual offices and kind of the, the future of work. Well, my pleasure. Anything we can ever help with, give us a shout. <laughs> Thanks. We'll be sure to do that. Uh, and I want to thank our listeners for joining us today for another episode of the Operate Intelligently podcast. Until next time, I'm Brian McDonald coming to you from Dude Solutions. Thank you for listening to the Operate Intelligently podcast produced by Dude Solutions. You can reach us by emailing dspodcast at dudesolutions.com or check us out on the web at dudesolutions.com.